All right, we are live, or we should be. Hope everybody can hear us. If we can't, let us know. Hi, everyone. Uh, how you doing? We're uh, here again. It's uh, Chris and Mincola with Mincola Group over at West USA Realty and Evan Einhorn of uh, Modern Home Lending. And today we're going to be talking about uh, tips and tricks on uh, your credit scores. Um, as usual, make sure that you are uh, liking, sharing, subscribing, following, and asking questions and all that good stuff. We want to hear from you guys. We want you to make sure you get the alerts when they come up and any other good information that we want to pop out there. So um, without further ado, um, looks like I spelled credit wrong, but anyway, we can uh, <laughs> start it up. All right, Evan, go for it. Perfect. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I talk to clients at all every single day about credit because um, credit is going to impact your application. So obviously it's very important, but there's a lot of tips and tricks that just people don't know until they talk to me. Um, and Chris, I know you've seen it. You, we run the simulations all the time. Yeah. So. And I wish, I wish more people would allow you to help them through the process. I know it's not fun talking about finances. I know. I know. But okay. Credit. Problems I don't mind. Right. <laughs> I don't mind talking about credit, but a lot of people do. And uh, I always like to say credit doesn't mean anything about your personality. Some of my favorite people I've met had the worst credit in the world. So that, that doesn't mean anything at all. Like yeah. I'm not, we're zero judgmental because, um, you know, I've met clients in the 400s that I absolutely love and I've helped them get to the 600s. So, right. um, well, yeah, like, I mean, you know, yeah. that's why we yeah. like. We care about the clients, and so do you. And, and it's uh, nice to have an, uh, a loan officer who's going to take the time to help people through the process. Yeah. So today, I want to talk about what impacts your credit score, as well as like a couple small tips and tricks for each category. So the biggest thing that impacts your credit score is your payment history. So. Your payment history, obviously, if you miss payments, that's not going to positively impact your credit. So making payments on time is the number one important thing for your credit. Um, now, with that being said, let's say you have missed a bunch of payments and most of your, you know, people go through things. Most of your accounts have had late payments at some point. One small tip that you can do is if you have a family member or something that will allow you to add them as an authorized user on their card, that could potentially increase your credit. So what I'm talking about is maybe you have three accounts, all have had a bad payment at some point, but your husband or your wife or your brother or mom or dad have a credit card that's been out there for 15 years with perfect history. You can be added as an authorized user to that and you instantly gain that. Now, with that being said, if that's just your only good credit trade line, you know, it's, it might not impact you as much as having your own credit card for 15 years with perfect history, but it's still kind of a way to cheat the system a little. Um, and on the mortgage side, that can't be your only good thing, but we, you know, that boosts your credit and potentially gets you a better deal and better rate. So right. that's one small tip there for payment history. And, and, and honestly, the biggest thing is making payments on time. Um, and a lot of people don't realize. How far back are you looking? Uh, does, so, it just, does it just depend on the situation? Or as far as credit goes? Yeah, Depending? as far as when you're looking at a home loan, pre-approval, and how, how far back are you going when you say credit history? Whatever's on credit. So uh, typically for most trade lines, it's seven years. Um, for bankruptcies and some other things, it's closer to 10 years. So. Thankfully, though, if you have a bad payment from six years ago versus a pay bad payment from six months ago, that pay that you know you can still have a missed you can even still have a missed mortgage payment from six years ago and have a credit score in the mid to high seven hundreds. If that's six months ago, that's a little more recent. You know that's going to be a lot tougher. So right. that's what I always say. You know that's the beauty of credit is it's not permanent and it changes every month. That if you did miss a payment, that Okay, continue to older. So the first one's payment history. There's that little trick with the off, adding yourself as an authorized user to someone else's card. Um, yeah. Second biggest thing that impacts you is your credit usage. So, you know, the number one things that, you know, 
Americans misutilize as credit cards. Um, no. Because they're hard. Because <laughs> they're hard to keep track of. So, um, if you can use your credit card responsibly, that is the one of the best ways that you can improve your, your credit. Because if you have, let's say, a bank does trust you with a five thousand dollar credit card. If you can keep that at a low balance and not max it out, that is proving your weight in gold. So that's huge. You know, and you always hear different things as far as keep it under 33%, keep it under 10%, keep it under 20%. Um, you hear all those different things because with different people, it's different limits. I will tell you, if you want to be conservative, keep your credit cards between a one and 5% balance. And I know that's on small, it could potentially be 30% for you if you have good payment history, but if you're newer or if you don't have that best payment credit history, keeping it between one and 5%. So what that means is if you have a thousand dollar credit limit, keeping your card between one and $50 is gonna keep the best potential credit. And the thing is that updates every month. So if, if last month you maxed it out and you can pay it off and this month we can update it, you know, maybe last month you had a 580, but this month you can have a 640. So right, right. I've seen credit scores jump over 100 points by paying off credit card debt. And we can run those simulations for you. So that's number two. Okay. Um, Just uh, on credit usage real quick. Um, the secure cards are kind of a way for you to boost people's scores too, right? Yeah, I'm going to get to that in credit types. Okay, um, good. Yeah, that is a huge one. So kind of first tip, authorized user. Second tip, keep credit card limits low. Um, and then the third biggest thing is, you know, so the payment history is number one. Credit usage, how much credit you're using is number two. Length of your credit history is the third biggest thing that impacts your credit. So someone that has, you know, mortgages, car payments, credit cards that have been open for 10 years are, is going to have better credit than someone that just opened up a credit card. Um, but here's another cheat system. If you can, you know, if you have new credit and you want to boost really quickly, um, you know, first of all, if someone has no credit, you can, I, you can get to a 700 within six to seven months. As long as you have no credit, you can get to, uh, close to 700, if not just over by just opening one credit card and keeping a little balance and making good payments. With that being said, sometimes people start with collections and whatnot, and you know, that's not the case, but length of history, this is where that authorized user trick comes into play sometimes, is let's say you do only have a year history. If you get added on your mom's or dad's or relative's long credit card of 20, 25 years, you might not have been born yet <laughs> if you're younger. You instantly gain all that all that validity. So it's not it's not as impactful as if you, you know you own that card yourself, but Adding that is definitely helpful as far as boosting your credit score. And that's something that can be done within a week or two. You know, so that's a great tip. Done in a week or two and within six to seven months, boosting those scores like that. That's that's Yeah, it's quick. Yeah, a lot of people think, oh my gosh, I need to work on my credit for a year or two. I need to pay all of this stuff off. Um, and that, just so people know when we say you'll help them, you're you're not charging them for this. Uh, free counsel, uh, so to speak, up front, right? I mean, I mean, there's no. So, so legally, I can't do credit repair, but all we do is credit advice. So I can say, hey, Chris, if you pay off your American Express card off, and you pay down your Wells Fargo card to a thousand dollars, this is the estimated score you're going to get to, and this is how long it will take. So you'll have an exact action plan, and you're not going to be guessing like, uh, I guess if I pay some stuff off, it might take me a year. You're gonna know, hey, Chris, you do these three things, you'll be estimated to be jumping from a 580 to a 680 over six months. You know what I mean? Okay. Something like that. Right. So yeah, yeah. You know, we don't we don't charge to run credit, we don't charge for credit advice. Um, you know, the one thing, and if if something's really bad, like we need a lot of things deleted, I will refer to a credit repair, but even they'll do a free consultation with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Um, what's going on and what's going to happen and what to expect, yeah. Right. Um, okay, so the fourth biggest thing that impacts your credit is the type of credit that is out there. Um, do you know like the number one thing for your credit? What type of account? If it's a uh, auto loan, student loan, credit card, mortgage, do you know by chance? No, number one for, for what? You mean as for, far as what? 
positive credit for positive credit? Um, for positive credit, so if you had to choose one. Um, if I had to choose one, I would say mortgage. So that's number two. Um, credit cards. Credit cards. Credit cards. Credit cards. So a lot of people do think car. A lot of people think I'm going to get a car. I'm going to get an installment loan to boost my credit and show payments on time. Um, but the biggest thing that can positively impact your credit as far as types of accounts is a credit card that's used responsibly. <laughs> so with that being said, a credit card that's maxed out is going to hurt you. A credit card that has payments on time every month and you have a low balance, you know, helps your credit so much. Um, because most most people are going to make their car payments, you know, that's that's, you know, versus a credit card. If you have a five thousand or ten thousand dollar balance or even two thousand, you might be tempted to max that out every month. So, you know, that's that's what they look at there. But you also want to have a good array. If you can have a credit card, installment loan and mortgage, that's going to be the best because you have a variety of different credit and you're making all those payments on top. So that's that's number four. And then the fifth is credit inquiries. So and just to clarify real quick, Evan, yeah. when you say best, you mean best to increase the score, or better your chances in order to get qualified for the loan pre-approval. Is that what you're saying then? Just to clarify that? Uh, both. Both. So, you know, when I run things for pre-approval through FHA's government system, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, et cetera, it will look at your debt usage. So you know, if you're maxing out your credit cards, yeah. if someone's maxing out their credit cards and has a 660 score versus someone that's not maxing out their credit cards and has a 660 score, you're going to be qualified for more if you're not maxed out. Just because they look at it, hey, you're riskier, you're maxing everything out, maybe you don't have the cash, maybe you shouldn't be buying a home. And that's where, you know, thankfully credit scores are not permanent. So month to month it will change and we can help you update it. So, right. Right. Okay. yeah. So we talked about payment history, credit usage, the length of history of the different types of credit, and number five is credit increase. So this impacts you a little. A lot of people think it impacts them way more than it does. Um, your first couple inquiries, you know, and that means basically running credit. So running credit, you want to keep that down if possible. But thankfully, if you only run your credit a couple times a year, maybe two, three times a year, it's not that big of an impact. If you're shopping around for an auto loan everywhere, if you're shopping around and you're applying for a bunch of credit cards and opening credit cards, that does not look good because it means like, oh, I want all the stuff I'm trying to get and you might overwhelm yourself. You know, there's right. a much higher chance that you overextend yourself or other people are denying you. But um, with home loan, they're not gonna have to search after they look at your rates. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> and there is a 30 day window. There's a 30 day window as far as mortgages go. I wish it was like that for cars because I've seen some people run credit at a dealership and they'll run it through like seven different banks. Yeah. And they'll they'll go in one day from a 660 to a 640 or even a 740 to a 720. Um, with right. a mortgage, if Wells Fargo runs it and then I run it within 30 days of that mortgage inquiry, it'll still show up as an inquiry, but it won't hurt you. And that the beauty of that is it gives us time to work on your credit. So if someone comes to me, we run credit, and we want to update credit balances, we can rerun credit within 30 days and that second time won't hurt you. Um, as long as it's within 30 days and they're both mortgage inquiries, which if we're running credit, it would be. So try to keep credit inquiries low. A lot of people think, oh my gosh, I have two credit cards. It'd be great if I had three, four or five that I was showing good history on. Well, if your first couple have good payment history, adding a third, fourth, and fifth is actually going to shorten your average credit length and it's going to add increase. So it's really not going to help you. It actually is going to decrease it. So a lot of people think if they have 10 different credit cards, it's going to help them, but not necessarily. So, yeah. and, and, and along those lines, uh, shutting down, um, yes, shutting down your credit. Like if you do happen to pay something off or, 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 or closing yeah. out an account or whatever, that, that could work against you, right? Yeah. You're, so it thinking you're doing good. So if you paid off a credit card, that's great. You know, yeah. you want to keep a balance on at least one of your credit cards that's small, but if you pay off your credit card, don't close it, especially if it's been open for several years because you know, if you have a credit card that's been open 4 years, a credit card that's been open 1 year, and you close that 4-year account, well now your average credit history is only 1 year old versus yeah. 2 and a half years old if you kept both of them open. Um, you know, so that's that's a big thing. 
And then the other thing I wanted to talk about was collections. So I can't tell you how many clients come to me and they're like, oh, I just have a couple small things to work on. I want to pay it off before I talk to you. I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, I legally can't tell you not to pay off collections, but what I can tell you is sometimes paying off collections will reduce your score. And the reason that is, is because the collection shows a thousand dollars and you're going to pay it off and it shows zero that might not have reported in a year or two. So what you're doing is you're showing a zero balance, but you're bringing it more recent. So I have seen, and I legally cannot tell you to not pay it off, but I can tell you, Hey, if you pay off that collection, that may drop your score from 660 to a 635. You know what I mean? So something along those lines that I always say, Hey, let me, let me play with our simulator first, just to see where you're at. You know yeah. what I mean? And get fully educated credit analysis from us. So, and and sometimes uh, even 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 uh, doing your best at everything, those sometimes an old collection could pop up, right? I mean, it just unfortunately can happen, right? Unfortunately, unfortunately. So, I talked to um, I just closed out an account with Cox on one of my properties, and it's interesting. I I got a phone call, and I'm like. I, I pay all my bills on time. I don't know what this is. I was on auto pay, but it turns out they don't do your last payment on auto pay. So I can't tell you how many Cox collections I've seen. Wow. And if I waited six months and if I ignored that phone call, I would have had a collection. So definitely try to stay on top of all your bills if possible, because simple stuff like that um, can really impact you. Even if you meant well and you're trying to make payments, if you know something might be out there from before, Try to get it resolved earlier before it goes to collections because once it's in collections, you know, it's on your credit report. Not saying you can never get it taken off, but, you know, we can talk about that on a one on one basis. So uh, when something is in dispute, let's real quick. Yeah. Uh, you're disputing something that can work uh, for you or against you. Correct. I mean, right. that where we're at in the process. Correct? Right. So if you're disputing something. Um, that could impact or could actually positively impact your score because it's, but it's artificially increasing your score because it's basically stopping the negative reporting if you're disputing something bad. As far as a mortgage goes, 10, 12 years ago, loan officers would tell their clients, hey, dispute everything on your credit, it'll boost your credit, will be great. Well, unfortunately, Unfortunately, the mortgage regulators and you know all the agencies that write up the guidelines, they caught on to that. So conventional, FHA, Jumbo, VA, they all have different rules as far as disputes go. Um, conventional, I just got to run it through the system. If it's nothing big, usually it's not an impact. On FHA, um, their guideline is, is if it's more than $1,000 of balances being disputed, then the loan needs to be manually underwritten. Um, but most government underwriters, if it's like that, they know it's artificially increasing it. So that's where sometimes we have to help remove disputes. Um, you know, and we take the paperwork from our clients and send it to the credit bureaus. So, you know, don't, you know, don't necessarily dispute any, you know, I always like to say, just talk to me first. I know that's, you know, easier said than done, but if you can just give me a call. We can talk about it. We don't necessarily even need to run credit, but we can talk about things first. Because I've had clients pay off a bunch of collections and dispute a bunch of stuff right before they talk to me. And I'm like, if I talked to you a month ago, we would have been in much better shape because you just dropped your score. And now that you have all these disputes, realistically, for pre-qualification, it's going to be tougher. So. Yeah. And I know we've said it a million times, but um, you know, for us, we can't even write an offer until Evan issues a pre-approval letter unless you have proof of funds that you're paying for a house all cash. Uh, or you're you're you know selling another property and, and moving the money over from the equity, but you know that's why um, we wanted to go over this to give you these tips and tricks. But Evan, of course, can help you through that entire process of getting you getting you through that home loan pre-approval and yeah. um, you know working you through those those credit issues uh, and debt to income and all that good stuff. So, um, Evan, did you have anything else that you wanted to uh, add today um, that we? Did we touch on secured cards? I know you said you wanted to come back to that. We did. Look, so, 
Well, secured cards. So um, yeah, let's touch base on that a little more. So <laughs> basically, I see a lot of people. Let's say they file bankruptcy, get rid of all their debt. They have no active credit. Um, the bet, like I told you, the best thing for your credit is a credit card. So you might not be approved for a credit card if only thing you have is bad credits. However, there is a, a secured credit card. And what that means is you're basically putting down a deposit, typically $200, that you're putting down a deposit and then they'll give you $200 credit card. It's guaranteed approval, not guaranteed approval with all banks, but the couple that I refer to and I can share are guaranteed approval because that way you're not having to get your credit run a bunch of times. So $200 deposit, you get a $200 card. Once you make so many payments, I think it's 12 payments, don't quote me on that, they'll give you your deposit back and it turns into a regular card. The beauty of it though, is that it helps your credit score just like a regular credit card. So if you don't think your score is good enough to get a credit card, a secured credit card is a great way to help boost your credit because on your credit report, it reports just like a regular credit card. So I think a couple of tips we talked about was adding as an authorized user, um, opening to your credit card if you can't get approved for any other credit cards. Um, be careful, um, cl collection payoffs could potentially drop your score. Um, and then you know try to limit your credit increase, make payments on time. You know, some of it's more self-explanatory than others, but you know, there are little tips and tricks. So uh well, Evan, um, I've got your number up there, so you don't have to give us that. Of course, you guys can go to modernhomelending.com, all right? Yep. Modernhomelending.com. You can even apply online there, and you yes. can check us out at uh, mincolagroup.com or call, text us, 480-788-8569, and you can always use our search engine. Uh, we even have a new home search engine, and Evan, and our experience will be – the incentives of the new home builders. Don't tell them I told you that, but you know, um, and we'll be able to negotiate better deals for you on those new homes too. So make sure you contact us before you go looking at those because they will try and cut us all out of the deal. And the deal is you're going to end up losing money, not working with Evan and with us. So um, Evan, anything else you want to add before we go? Nope. Just don't be afraid to reach out. Um, if you call me, that doesn't mean we're running credit, but I can, I'm more than happy to talk to you if you're six months out, a year out, two years out, whenever, wherever you are in the process. So, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys, for joining us. We'll see you guys next week. If you guys need anything, let us know. All right. We'll talk Thanks, to you Chris. soon. Thanks. See ya. Seven.